Hey guys, it's Weller Woman here, and today I'm going to be showing you how I do my rusted sunflower. Now, the only difference between the rusted sunflower and the painted and the plain versions that I do is the type of metal that I use for the petals and the. So, for the rusted sunflower, I will be using galvanized metal for the petals and the leaves. And I use galvanized because I have a little bit more control of how much and where I want the rust to develop on these specific parts. The rest I use is carbon steel other than my center. This, this piece right here is stainless steel. No matter what piece I do, it's always stainless steel. Now the piece behind it is carbon, a carbon punch plate. And I love the sunflower rusted version with this because when I put that rusting mixture on there, it will rust this back plate and not the front plate because stainless steel does not rust. So it really gives that dark center feel as if it were in nature. So that's my favorite part about the sunflower that I have. So the first part that we're going to be doing is we are going to be tacking these two pieces together. As you can see, they are not flush with each other right now. And the reason why I want to tack these together is because when I go to press this in the vise, these two metals will automatically want to pull because they're bending at different rates because the stainless steel is a lot thicker than the carbon steel punch plate. So what we're going to do is we are going to go around and start tack welding it up so that it prevents as much as possible. As you can see, this part right up here, it did not flush up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be taking my grinder and going around it, making sure that all, it's hot, all of these um, edges are flush with one another. After I finished grinding around and making the edges flat, I did also hit it with a wire wheel to get a lot of that heat off of there, just because it's a little bit easier to clean when it's flat versus when it's already rounded. So now we're gonna go ahead, make sure your stainless steel is facing into your coupling, and then you're gonna put your cap to the back. So we're gonna start to line it up and it is important to try to get it all centered so that it bends evenly. That's pretty close. Okay, we're gonna go with that and we're just gonna keep pushing it in We got it all cleaned up and pretty flush. So now I'm going to come in and do my second press to get that dome to go even further. And it is just as important as last time. You line it up right in the center. we're 
So next we are going to move on to forming the actual petals on the sunflower. So before I go ahead and form these petals out, I'm going to take my die grinder and rough them up because as like before when I did that center, it's always easier to clean up when something's flat versus when you put creases and bends and all that other stuff in there. So that's what I'm going to do next. doing here is just moving it around until it looks good. I think we'll go with that. So our next thing, our next step would be to tack it up. Before we get going, I want to make sure to spray all of my pieces with this anti-spatter spray. Otherwise, when I go to tack this, it'll leave little BBs and burns all over, and it's really hard to clean in this area. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure everything's good and covered, and I'm going to go ahead and cover my hearts right now too. So that if something happens to pop over there, be good. Do both sides. And I will spray the other side of my sunflower after I get it tacked up before I go to attach this part. So this is what it's going to look like when it's all welded up. And remember we got galvanized metal, we got stainless steel, and then underneath the stainless steel we have carbon so we have three different types of metals that we welded so that's why the white is the residual from welding on galvanized metal and then the heat is what i'm going to get off with my wire wheel it looks like all cleaned up um i kind of did rub off my mark there but it's still there so i'm going to come back in and remark that up so i don't lose that so our next step is going to be doing the leaves. And I've already done like a rough sketch of what the actual leaf pattern is on a sunflower. And I'm going to be using my uh, Dremel 4300 with this nice little hand attachment that makes it so much more comfortable and easier to do. And what I did here is I took um, one of my grandfather's old clamps and one of his old pipe tools and I cut it down, welded it up, and I cut a little notch in here in the top and it makes for a nice little Dremel holder. So I'll take it, hang it in there so that way my line doesn't get kinked and I can keep it nice and comfortable. And to do that, we're going to be using a mallet, a sandbag, and a shrinking stump. Now, what I've already done is I've taken um, my leaves here and I put them in my vise, and I've done three bends: one down the center and across our tops. And this is just going to start getting the forming process started. So let's get in on forming them out the rest of the way. So as I'm forming them, I'm going to start getting these little inclusions right here. And what I'm going to do when I get those is I'm going to take it over my shrinking stump and flatten it out. So 
So now they're all nice and flat again. And what I'm doing is, is I'm working from the outside in. And as I'm doing that, this metal is gonna get so stiff and hard, I'm not gonna be able to move it. So what I'm gonna keep doing is I'm gonna keep curving this in until I get the shape that I want. But for this one, I'm probably gonna have this one bend back a little bit more and have it be nice little um, curve shape all the way across it. And then my second one, I'll do it just a little bit different. stems that go to our leaves and we're going to put some bends to them. So I'm going to start with the main one first and I'm going to take like a half inch to three quarters of an inch and I'm going to stick it down in the vise and this part down here is what's going to be attaching to the head. And this one I can bend with my hands right now. So I'm just going to bend it straight back and that's going to be right there attached to the head. So now we're going to give it some more flowy curves from the side and then we're going to come in and bend it from, give it some more direction. It's got a little bit right now, but we're going to come in and give it a little bit more. And sometimes what I like doing is just taking it, bend it back, bend it back, bend it back, and bring it back to as close to center because it's not going to come back as close to center but it's gonna give it that breakup of the straight metal. And it's always important to make sure this is straight because if you're bending it, you're gonna give it that side bend and your head's gonna shoot off in a different direction. Come back here because it's a little bit too much. Bring it forward. And then I'm going to come up just a little bit higher and break up the straightness of this metal right up here. change as you're welding it up you see oh I I want to put that a little bit bend it back a little bit and you can always change it this is just uh just to get us started type now let's put in the side bends keep it straight which it's not rotated on this in the vise, which it happens. 
This one, I'm going to do it just a little bit different, hitting it at the bottom. And this is where I can straighten out from that, where it twisted on us. So there's our side, and then there's our front. It looks really good. Now we're going to move on to the leaves, or the stems that go to the leaves. And this one, I'm going to do it, I'm not going to do these the same, because I want them to look completely different from each other. So one's going to have like a, a sharper bend to it and one's going to have a more flowy bend to it. Kind of like that. And this one already has a slight bend to it, but I'm gonna side bend, but I'm gonna give it just a little bit more. Okay, so that's what we got right there. So you can kind of just imagine it right there, and then the leaf would attach at the very end of it. Let's go ahead and get the second one finished. So this one I'm going to stick a little bit more in there to get a little bit uh, steeper bend to it. And then I'm going to curve it. Maybe. So there's the difference between the first or the two stem things. Okay, so I have my flat bar here. It is 3 16 by one inch. And this is my roller that I use. Um, it's specifically made for this thickness of metal. Um, it can go a little bit smaller, but the one inch bar is what it works really good with. And when I roll it, I always want to try to keep it up against the edge of these rollers to help keep the roll straight. But if it does get off, I can always fix that in my vise. So let's roll it up. And this right here is tightening it down so it's bringing these down further on each other, causing it to roll it.
Now it is already starting to move off the edge of my rollers here. So it will start to roll at an angle. But I will be able to fix that in my next step when I go to my vise. Okay, that's pretty darn close. So as you can see, it did roll off. That's because it did not stay up against there. But we will fix this on in our next step at our vise. And I usually like to put it on the back side first, just to make sure everything's good before I release the clamps. And try not to tack up your clamps while you're doing it. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack it on the top, tack it on the bottom, then I will weld down the front, weld down the back. Our next step is we are going to be taking our grinder, grinding it flush on the top, the outside right here, and also the bottom. We don't have to worry about what's in the, on the back side right here because that's never going to be seen. So we are done welding this up. I uh, ground it down flush on the tops, bottoms, and the face, and then I went ahead and numbered it one, two. And the reason why I do that is when I go to trace it out, just in case it rolled a little bit different, that, that way it'll be a little bit more of a match and a little bit easier to weld up. I won't have to do as much grinding. So one, two, so when I go to trace this, I will be name, uh, go ahead and number this one. Number one in the center, trace around. And then I'm going to go ahead and flip it, put it in this other corner, 
Put a number two on there, double check. And there we have it. And this is a 16 gauge sheet of carbon steel. Um, it doesn't matter that it's rusted because I can take this rust off and make it look really nice. My Beverly so Shear and it cuts all the way up to 9 gauge. So it's very convenient to cut everything out for me. So I'm just first going to single out each piece. Get as close to it as possible. So there's our first one. So that way I can use my scrap for something else. And when we're cutting this out, we are going to cut on the inside of the purple line. just going to start taking chunks off of it. And this is the best way to keep your circle shape. little chunks at a time. And it, it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. check make sure my blades are still tight otherwise it likes to pinch it if it's not so there's our number two let's double check to see how close we are. So because it's not perfectly round to begin with, I kind of have to move it around, and I think that's it right there, to see where my exact matchup is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a silver streak and just make a line here where it matches up. That way I can come back to it when I go to weld it. And then we'll do number one. These blades like to get a little, especially this top one, it likes to get a little bit looser on this thicker stuff. So it's always better just to check it as you go. Make sure everything stays nice and tight.
there's our number one. So again, we're gonna stick it on here and just move it around. That's it right there. So again, I'll mark it. And next we'll weld it. Let's go ahead and get this base ground down. Okay, I just finished cleaning up the base. I've rounded all the edges to make it nice and smooth so there's no sharp sides. And I put a little bit of anti-spatter on here so that when I'm welding, I don't have to worry about big BBs sticking to the base. And I've went ahead and also marked the center where I'm gonna be um, welding the stem onto. And actually, I'm going to be welding in a reverse style process. Um, I don't start from the head and work my way down. I start from the base and work my way up. So it'll be stem to base. I will weld up the stems on the leaves and then I will weld the bottom most leaf and then I will do the one on top and then last I will do the head. And I've done this method just because it's a lot easier to clean up around the base as soon as you weld it instead of um, doing it last when you have this leaf here you can't get all the way underneath of it cleaning it properly you can but you have to use like files and burr bits and it's just easier to do it this way I found so let's go ahead and get everything welded up and always my first tack is going to be in the back that way I can maneuver it tip it back or I can move it side to side still What I'm going to do is I'm just looking at it and just imagining it with the head on there. How much tilt back do I want? That may be just a little bit too much. So I'm going to bring it in. And I'm going to check it on every single side. And even if we want to, too, we can grab a, a leaf. This one's going to be on my left side. Kind of bring it in, too. And just double check everything from the sides before I finish welding down the rest of the stem. That's going to be good. So I'm going to go ahead and weld all the way around. This is our final weld on it, and I got the majority of the heat up, and if you can look just right back here, that's what I was trying to explain earlier, that's why I weld it from the bottom up, because even though I can get to it, doesn't mean I can clean it that well because of the, the little bend here, I can't get my die grinder flat in there, but that's okay because it's going to rust anyway and it probably won't be visible on this one. So next
next we're going to attach the leaves. And I've already marked up here, this one is what I want to be my point. So I'm always going to have that up here referenced. And I think with this one... I'll decide which one I want on top. I think we'll go just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and mark on my stem. And that's for that one. And... Probably about there. And then I'll just bring this one in here and just double check, find my top point, get my finger on the center back here. So you can kind of see it. We could go up a little bit more. Yeah, we're going to go up just a little bit more on that one. So, let me remark this. So, since we got that one up there, we're probably going to move that other one up as well. Yep, just a little bit. So they don't get any BBs on them. I've already put anti-spatter spray, but just to be on the safe side. And as like before on my stem, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tack it on this top side actually. So that way I can move it up and I can move it side to side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start up here, weld down both sides, and that's going to be my weld. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the top, go down, and then do the same thing on the back side. That way it's a pretty seamless weld. And I'm just going to buff up, get all that little... BB stuff. Well, I guess that one came off, but I'm going to get all that heat off of there and just nicely buff it down. Start with the wire wheel first.
that's why I go slow with it because it, you never know what it's going to take. the second one. But I actually just wire wheeled off my mark so we're just gonna have to start back over again. So that's our point. I think we'll go Maybe something like that. There's my point. There's my center. I think that looks pretty good. So we're gonna do the same thing as last time, weld down the front, weld down the back. See how those little BBs fell right there? And it didn't stick? All I have to do is just hit that with my wire wheel and it should come right off. That one decides it wants to stick, so I'm gonna bring out my chisel. I'm just going to use my little chisel. Okay. There it is. 
So this one, this one can be a little bit challenging. So I had to follow this point back. This one right here. And then go on my little mark that I have for center. Double check, that one's top. And tack on the top. Okay, and this one you are most definitely going to need to be moving. Pretty good from the back side. Okay, so that looks pretty good. They're pretty close. Um, bring it, rotate it just a little bit more moved on me so okay I'm gonna turn my welder down because the head is a flip thinner metal And I'm going to do the same thing as we did with the leaves. I'm going to weld one down. Set. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the same thing as we did on our leaves. We are going to weld down one side and weld down the other side. And I'm going to try to stay more on the, the stem and kind of just wash it over to this because this one is 22 gauge. It's a lot thinner. a little bit more right here because it flew through just a little bit. There we go. And all these BBs, they're just coming right off. Not much effort at all. So this is what it will look like when it's done being welded. The next step would be either to put a clear coat on it to keep it the color of the metal, to paint it the yellow, brown, and green and keep the base the color of the metal, or to stain it, and that's what we are gonna be doing. So let's get into that next process now. When we do our rusting process, you're gonna use three ingredients to get that rusting process going. You're gonna use white vinegar, some table salt, and hydrogen peroxide. And what I typically do is I will take some of the salt and I will pour it in with the vinegar and I'll shake it up really good and then I will spritz it on there and then after it's got a good coat or it's sat on there for at least three minutes then I will take the hydrogen peroxide and spray it on it and that's what really brings the rusting process to life. Let's get started.
Now our last step to this is going to be adding a clear coat. And the reason why I add a clear coat is I want to stop the rusting process, otherwise it will continue to develop throughout the years. And the uh, clear coat that I always use is a Rust-Oleum Hammered Clear. And it gives a nice little bumpy, rustic te texture that just reminds me a lot of nature. So let's get to it. Another thing that I add to every single one of my pieces is my logo sticker that has my handle on there for my social medias so that way that they can always know who did the piece and where they can come to find me if they want something done for themselves. Um, you can find me on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and um, I'm working on my website, uh, welderwoman.com. I'm hopefully going to try to aim to have it up before the holidays as I'm doing it myself, so it's taking a bit longer. But you can always subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do try to put up a couple new um, tutorial videos on how I do my pieces. I will be having a tulip d demonstration coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. And thank you for tuning in.